Hello and welcome to this uh, Blitz uh, Implementation and Project Support Toolkit Part 4. This was originally played at the Scotland OUG uh, on the 11th of June. Uh, I'm just going to go through it and help uh, cover some of these uh, areas that were perhaps missed by participants. My name is Glenn Whelan. I work for Enginatics. So I've been working uh, with Oracle EBS for well, since the early 90s when I used to work for Oracle support. Let's start by um, just explaining the toolkit from left to right. We are covering part four. So uh, we're talking about the mass uh, data form exports, uh, the enterprise command center, management and export and reconciliation. So on the left, we've got uh, the database tuning, which is part one, uh, things like concurrent requests and patch usage. Then we've got the support toolkit, which is aimed really at the support people or people that are going to do, do upgrades, data migration, need to monitor exceptional interfaces and so on. Uh, and then we've got our, our operational reporting suite, which is really uh, covering the record to report, order to cash, purchase to pay and, and general supply chain. So uh, I'm just going to cover the time critical elements. So uh, and I'll start by uh, logging into Oracle. So starting with um, the Enterprise Command Center, which was introduced uh, by Oracle uh, from 12.2.4 and this can be applied retrospectively or enabled if you've got that version or higher. Um, this particular version installed is the ECC version 4 uh, and I'm looking at the open receivables part uh, of the dashboard. Uh, you can also look at this on, on our site so if you go to enginatics.com uh, there's a demonstration environment where, where you can come and have a look at. Um, so this just gives you a dashboard view, uh, you know, it's supposed to modernize EBS, uh, give you a stepping stone in between now and cloud and really just uh, enhance your experience uh, by using receivables. Now, one of the things you can do, obviously, you can drill into each of these elements uh, and look at the past due, uh, but you can also export the functions from here. So if you were to do an export from here, what you would get is you'd get the uh, the dash you basically get the export of the dashboard uh, where you can then export to a, a CSV. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, export, and um, then it will take it through to a CSV. There are basic limitations here in that uh, you have a, a limitation of a thousand records. Uh, also, it does work with CSV only, uh, which many users will complain about. Um, so here we see we've got CSV. Uh, the format's not that uh, pretty and you, you, you need to do some work. So basically you, you would come in here, uh, you do your formatting necessary and then you could apply your filters. Um, so, so that's, if you like, how the standard basic uh, dashboard works. Um, but also there are, there are a number of programs that push the data into uh, the dashboard or the command center. And these are run from, from EBS S themselves. So if you go across to, to EBS, and if I just dip into receivables, uh, if you have a look at uh, what's available over there, uh, vision operations, I'm just about, uh, if you see here, we, you can also access the command center from here. Um, but if we were to start a request um, for each particular responsibility or module, uh, you have the ability to submit the enterprise load. Uh, and these are generally managed by the support team, uh, but th that in themselves uh, can cause a problem in that uh, all of these have to be running on a regular basis. Um, and once they're running, then obviously you're in a position to, um, you know, export or, or push the data across to the command center. Um, so. Let me just show you how you would do that uh, with the, the command set. I must have just missed it. Uh, so there's a, a bunch of these programs uh, called command center load. Perhaps uh, I'll just go into the right responsibility and do that. Uh, let's go like this. ECC. And let's just do what I called earlier. Uh, so across here, we've got uh, the program called ECC Run Load, and the actual program 
is called that it launches is the receivable command center so if i now submit the request um, you'll see what i mean you can decide whether you're going to do it in an incremental basis and typically users throughout the day would probably want it done in incre incremental or you can take the uh, do the metadata and then uh, a, a full load but the full load will do both functions anyway uh, and it will push all your new invoice and uh, receipts etc will go across into the, into the command center but if you can imagine there's there's a lot of these running at any one point in time and if anything goes wrong uh, then clearly you'll end up with errors and then you'll end up with your dashboard Here, here's an example this one was for service contracts because there was so much data uh, involved and there are profiles that control how far back you go this particular uh, load basically overran the the memory allocation and failed so within the blitz uh, report which is uh, what we're talking about today uh, we, we've got a suite of reports that look after this so if i just cancel that and if we go into the categorization um, within the toolkit that i mentioned we've got the metrics uh, operations setup and support and the time critical well we put the time critical uh, categorization for all of the ECC programs and if you see here we've got uh, all the different dashboard views so we emulate uh, what's going on uh, w when we were doing that uh, export there we take the, the the dashboard view and then we we run it against DBS because the command center is running in its own database and it's getting its data pushed across so um, from from a from a dashboard perspective you probably want to bring out your data more volume data than the dashboard can can actually produce uh, so we've developed these views which will extend that uh, amount of data that can be done um, so if I look across here for, for the receivables processes you see here we've got one here called the receivables outstanding uh, and then you'd select your operating unit uh, and then you would run. So once that data is now coming out, it goes across, you see here the status running uh, and then it delivers it directly into Excel. So there's no need to do any formatting. You don't get any data problems, any data limit problems. And you can see here we've got uh, the same uh, formatting or at least a fully formatted Excel sheet with the same data. So if we lay that across here, uh, and, and then we're to do some ordering, you'd see we get exactly the same type of data. So I'm just going to do that. Um, if we come across and if I filtered purely on uh, one of the customers, so we can see the wood through the trees, AC uh, networks, or perhaps I'll pick a smaller customer than that one. Um, let's just take uh, application software. I think that was one. Yes, so if you look at application software, and then if I compare here, pop a filter on here, get rid of that uh, row there. And if I put a, a filter on that, uh, I'll just show you what I mean. So filtering now on the customer, and I'm going to pick the same customer as we had over here, just to be sure, ABC software, that was right. Um, now if I just grab that customer and untick this, and you see we've got the same view as they have over there so we're selecting the dashboard data as though it's in the enterprise command center but we're selecting it from the ebs so when it comes to volume export if there's if there's not enough uh, output coming from your enterprise command center or indeed if you just want to take it directly without going into the dashboard you could simply run your export and the way we would do that uh, is by running a blitz report so for example if you're in a, a transactional form uh, you're processing uh, invoices and so on um, through the transactional form you could do a quick um, a quick overview from here so for example we put all of the uh, blitz reports on the menu so the user doesn't have to leave the form and then here we've got uh, the ability here and, and it would be very straightforward to add 
um, a customer here if, if was required. Um, very simple setup. Uh, a normal user wouldn't get this setup button. That, that's only there for the IT team who, who are making the additions to the, to the reports. But what they would get is the ability to relay out the report. So from a user viewpoint, it becomes like a folder technology where they can simply pick available columns. And you see here, we've got a raft of other columns on the left, available columns. And then on the right hand side, uh, we can do things like move around uh, to different positions on the layout, because it could be that, you know, certain things here not required, maybe they're not using purchase order. So take it off the report. So it's a lot less clutter. So that's the user capability. Uh, but from a setup perspective, a programmer perspective, they would get to see the SQL. The parameters are there. They're very simple to add. So for example, if you wanted to add customer, you would simply come in here and you would add customer and then you would assign that. I'm not going to do that. Um, so if I just raise that row into the assignments, you can assign these reports at any level, any responsibility. I'm going to assign at a user level uh, and then that's assigned. Now, in terms of version control, all the Blitz reports are version controlled. They are there so that they can be developed and moved between an environment. So here, this one has been tested by uh, Glenn and ready for unit tests. So we keep the tracking, the SQL is kept there for records. Uh, you don't really need to have a change control system with Blitz report because the records maintained. You can move between environments, you can import export uh, using here. So if you had multiple views or reports, you can just simply export them. They'll be saved as XML and then you'll Im import them into your next system. Similarly, you can import any report. So if you have a favorite BI publisher report, you can bring those in um, and convert them within minutes without having to hire a developer. So if you take, for example, look, I'll give you an example of that very quickly. The all inventories report, that's a famous costing report that's used uh, by the costing responsibility. You see, it brings the SQL, brings the parameters, the assignments, and then you're able to run it. So you don't have to develop XML. You don't need to have a tricky person relaying out your XML. So within a few minutes, you've got XML reports that have been converted into Blitz report. Now we don't use the XML layer, as I mentioned, we go directly, directly to Excel. So therefore it's the fastest uh, way of getting information to Excel. There, there is no uh, no limits at all. You can have as many uh, rows as you want. So if you if you export more than a million records, then we just simply create more sheets. So as as the process goes on, it goes out through the concurrent manager, and then a next sheet will be added. So if you look at uh, what what happens through the concurrent request. So you've got your requests here. Uh, so from usability, you can schedule and have these just per normal request. But the big advantage is that you don't have to register the program because every program, there's just one program that's registered and the rest is just a, is basically a prefix of the name of the report. So really cuts down development cycle. Flexibility is uh, endless because you, you have a mix between an IT person creating things or you can lay out as a user. We give that functionality. You can send the output uh, directly to Excel, you can send it to CSV or you can send it to Microsoft uh, type files. Once this, this, uh, this report has been run, obviously I can close this, this form now. Um, so we've got our ECC data there. But if you're a support person, you'd probably be wanting to manage these things because for every dashboard, there's a, a basically a command center push program that's either going to load in full or incrementally. Or if you change your data sets, perhaps you have to add new flex fields, then you want to change the metadata and so on. So if we run some of those reports, the EC management reports, um, we've got a suite of reports here. We've got the concurrent program listing. We've got the data load tracking. So this is probably the key report whereby we, we are actually looking at the performance and keeping an eye on how up to date the dashboard's running. And therefore, we're able to manage that the, the users have got the right dashboard views. And what this is doing is checking all the data, seeing the success rate, allowing you to filter on any failures or whether anything is still running. So in this case, we've we've got uh, service contracts that were ended in, in a in a still running state. Now that's examining the uh, the 
ECC tables that they resided in EBS. So for, as far as they're concerned, they're still running. So what you would then do is you'd look at your F&D concurrent requests that are related to that. Um, so if you went into concurrent requests, you'd run a, another one of our Blitz reports. If I just show you what I mean, you'd come in here and you'd look at your concurrent analysis. And then here you've got a beautifully formatted uh, view of all the concurrent requests that have been run within time, etc. Perhaps a within failure. You, you maybe look at uh, things that have errored out. Um, and then this would be scheduled on a sort of an hourly, two hourly basis for the names of the concurrent programs you're interested in tracking. And then here we've got our list of failing programs. You see here we've got uh, a number of uh, errored reports that have gone on. And if you go across to the right, you've got all the detail about what was happening. Uh, in this particular case, there were, there were some failures. Um, I'm not sure you know, what, what the reasons were. This is a test environment, but you can see uh, very straightforward to get the, uh, the failure messages. And furthermore, on the parameters side of things, quite often Oracle like to do this, uh, this ones and noughts thing and, and IDs. Uh, well, we change that for you, we make that uh, much more readable. So if you were to wrap that, you get a really good view about what these ones and noughts mean. You see, it's all been decoded. It's the same on uh, any object that we do. Um, so, for example, if we do a report on uh, profiles, which is another common place to put, uh, to put uh, some kind of tracking, who's changed what when. Uh, it's particularly useful when you're in support. You see here you've got the ability to track the profiles and, and when they were changed at what level since when the, were they changed and who changed them by and then again we do this translation process so we, we do a reference on the values so you can see exactly what's going on um, so here we've got the profile values here as you scroll down uh, you've got different meanings against those profiles uh, and we just take it one one step further so US dollar becomes US dollar, of course. A value of one is standard, uh, and we do the translation throughout. So there's a lot of work there, useful for support and people who are who are looking after EBS. Um, and so let's just go back to back to our slide. So we talked about mass data exports. Well, I'm just going to come back to that. We were talking mainly about managing ECC. Uh, so if we go across um, and have a look at the type of things you can do as mass export. Uh, there's, there's plenty of modules where you need to be able to mass export data, uh, invoices, order management, uh, all of those good modules. Uh, so if I go across into um, a different responsibility, I'm just going to change user. So I'm going to actually start a new session of, um, of Firefox here, just bear with me. I'm going to uh, start up with an order management session and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we log in to order management and I'll log in as a person that's got access. Uh, so, and this is available to you as well. So if you want to go and have a look at the, the command centers, by all means, uh, log on to Nginx on the home page. It will give you the user credentials and the passwords that you require. There's, there's a whole raft of reports there that you can look at. Um, there are functions around supply chain hubs and all kinds of new innovations from the Nginx team. So let, let's um, start by having a look at uh, order management and I'll just show you the, um, the, the, the mass export concept. So Blitz report can be on any menu you want. It can be in any form that you want and that's a simple addition for you to do. So if we just start by going into order organizer, one of, one of the um, sorry, order organizer. One of the the age-old problems for customer services is, you know, they might get called. They're on a phone call, perhaps to Amazon. A few thousand lines required to be exported, and traditionally they'll have to come up here and do the export. Well, we think it's much better if they just run a very quick blitz report. It's got the same parameters as you would have on a order management form. You just come down the side here, you've got open orders only, you've got the ability to check status, order type, customer, etc. I don't need to do that because the performance is so fast, uh, it will just directly send the output into uh, Excel 
without having to do any of that. So you see here now I'll overlay the previous report. We've got the customer and as we step across, we've got all of the order management details, line type, order type, status, price, promising, date, uh, ship quantity and so on. And again, you can just change the layout, but as a user or as, as a IT person, you could do that and share it with the users. That's entirely up to how you want to manage your installation of Blitz report. Okay, so back to where we were. On top of that, you've got all of the usual functions you would expect. So if you were to go uh, and have a look at, uh, for example, advanced planning, uh, another area that's time critical, uh, you need to have the ability to export mass data from the workbench to plan this workbench. Uh, so we provide again a number of usable reports for this this function. So if I go across, uh, open a plan up, you see here we've got volume data. I've been in it, in implementations where they've wanted to export all of the planned orders. Um, so at this point, we would just simply um, do a, a supply and demand. We, we go like this. Uh, and then you would then have to export your data accordingly, but not with us. So what we would do is enable a report here and you could then say, OK, what type of report? Well, I've got the planner exceptions here or I want to just simply export the whole of the supply and demand. We include the pegging. So the pegging down here we would include. Uh, you've got the, the capability of doing that. So if we run this report, this is for a particular planner, uh, we can mass export this sort of time critical data and then we could do pivots on it or whatever we need to do so in this particular case uh, somebody's obviously put uh, a, a bad parameter in so i'll just quickly find out which that parameter is um, and then i'll run it again until i have a look at the log which will tell me that uh, something is amiss let's have a quick look uh, we see uh, we've got an invalid uh, number format so one of these parameters has been adjusted since i last ran it um, so i'm just going to take out a couple of these values where a number would be uh, let's pop that one out i think that should be it and let's do that always things happen at the wrong moment so those parameters have been defined but we have this is a demonstration system but people sometimes adjust your data uh, when they log on um, but anyway in this particular case it's now running it what that's doing is it's dumping all the planned orders including the planned data uh, out into Excel um, you can schedule these, as I mentioned, you could have it emailed to you in the morning. So here we have all the planned orders for this uh, particular uh, set of criteria. Uh, and then that could be then shared around uh, with the right people. So from a, a suggested plan date here to the right, we've got the warehousing, we've got the make or buy, we've got the, you know, the different time fencing going across there, whether or not uh, the status is to release and, and, and so on. Uh, similarly, if we were to run another one of the reports, uh, we could then simply go to the next uh, report uh, and then run, uh, for example, the pegging report I mentioned. So in this case, we've got a pegging uh, for, for John Smith. Uh, we want to release the uh, single row pegging without having it disjointed on one row. We've got again, we've got the ATP plan, the exception. Uh, the supply type, the peg quantity, the demand quantity, what it's pegged to over here, uh, and what other things like excess and safety stock has been pegged to. So that's the the type of um, time critical uh, reporting we would talk about. Uh, and in our next session, I'll just go back to where we were. So talking about taking mass data out, you can take any object out in, in literally seconds, items, suppliers, customers, etc. cetera. Um, reconciliation will be more about uh, looking at different objects. So if we look at, uh, it includes a, a sub-ledger set of reports um, that, that do the cost accounting side of things. Um, 
uh, and all of those type of reports would be in the time critical bucket. So from from me, that's enough uh, in terms of taking enough of your time. Uh, I hope this was useful for you. Um, if you stay tuned for part three, we'll cover some of the uh, different process reporting and I'll show you how to add metrics to any report. I'll also show you how to bring in your discovery reports and so on and so forth. Thank you.